it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. I'm going to show you how to purchase the SVG file to do the cake topper that moves. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to my website, theuselesscrafter.com, and select shop. Once you're in shop, we have different categories. So you want to go to SVG files. And it's the first one here. It's the moving cake topper template SVG bundle. So you want to select it and then scroll down and purchase. When you're in the purchase screen, you want to make sure you enter in your email, your billing address, and how you're going to purchase it. I'm using a code and save it. Okay, and let's purchase the file. Once you purchase the file, you're going to get a confirmation page just like this, and you actually want to click on download. The download is right here on the confirmation page. So I'm going to select it and there's my zip file. I want to go and click on the pick list and go show folder, double click on it, and I'm gonna move this file into my downloads. So I'm basically taking a zip file, unzipping it, and moving it over so that now when we're in design space, we can just upload the file. So I'm in a project. When I go to upload, upload image, browse, and we know it's in downloads, right? So we're gonna go to our downloads and here's our moving cake topper. Just double click on it. The image name, it's currently called Moving Cake Topper um, SVG Pack, The Useless Crafter. You can change this, you can leave it. You wanna make sure that whatever is in here is how you're going to find it in Cricut's Design Space Library. So this is gonna sit in all the images over here. So you wanna make sure that you know what you're naming it. Okay, we're gonna upload. And now that it's here, you're gonna select it and add to canvas. The file looks really big, but it's actually sized correctly for an eight inch cake topper. You want to, um, let's make this a little bit smaller just so that we're not zooming in and out. Okay, and let's ungroup this. It's in different colors just so that you can see the different pieces. But for me, how I view it is it's basically three colors. This is your acetate layer, so I'm just gonna move it aside, okay? And then what you have is you have this piece I'm gonna move up here. These thinner pieces I'm gonna move down here like this, and I'm gonna nestle them in, or nest them inside of each other. So, <coughs> excuse me. These top items right here, the thicker ones or the full circles, I'm gonna make them all one color. Now this is up to you. If you're gonna cut multiple colors, then you can change the colors right now. For me, I'm separating it into basically the foundation, which is where the time clock is going, going to be, and um, building the shaker. So these are all my foundational pieces. These pieces here, these four pieces, they're more decorative. Um, they're the thin layers that sit on top in different colors to make your, to start building your theme. So because I don't want to waste paper, I'm going to grab these two items, for instance, and go to align and center it. And, and then I'm going to attach it. They're going to cut like this together. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with these two guys. Um, go to align, center, and attach. Now, if I know that these two are gonna be the same color, I'm just gonna grab all four circles, <coughs> excuse me, change it to orange, for instance. So now I've got an orange layer, I've got my building blocks, and my acetate layer. There's one more step that you can take. These are built so that they sit right on top of each other, okay? So if you wanna understand, this right here, this little open space, that's where your, your clock is gonna go, okay? So this is going to be our backmost layer, okay? The next thing that goes on top is this. It's going to cover the time piece and it's got a little hole for the, the needle to come through. You can do two layers or you can do one layer. That's totally up to you. So this one is optional. You can delete if you need to. The next two pieces will be your tabs. You're basically building the wall so that your, the, um, the, the ticking hand of the clock can move, can have space to move. And then also if you want to put in any shake, you know, shaker embellishments, your sequins, your glitter, 
um, fun little baubles, things like that, right? Or trinkets. That's what you're gonna put in here because we're building this wall up around here. What's gonna close that wall to keep all your sequins on the inside is this acetate layer. That's gonna be clear, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, the next piece that goes on top is going to be this. This is gonna hide the teeth. It is designed to fit perfectly on top. If you are not perfect, <laughs> or if you wanna make it thicker, that is super easy to do. All you do is you do an offset, and let's do it maybe just 0.05, just to give you a little bit more room, or maybe, you know what, let's do 0.10, okay? You're going to hit apply, and you can just grab both items, and I would just weld it, okay, and change it back to the other color, depending on whatever color you want. So you can go either for perfection, or if you wanna give yourself a little bit more leeway, you can do that, and this will sit more like this and it will hide the teeth and it will hide basically any of your imperfections. These two pieces will go on top so you can see it kind of like expands out and that allows you to put all your embellished items on there, all your theme, uh, themed items. Like um, I had Tinkerbell and the moon and the clouds, right? <clears throat> and then sitting on top of everything else, I had the pirate ship. So again these are two layers you can turn one into an acetate layer so that you can see you know things underneath it I mean this is made so that all the shapes are ready for you and you can decide what color they're going to be or what material they're gonna be okay when you go to cut this what you can do is these pieces fit inside here so I would do what we did down here is I would grab these two and go to align and center and then you want to attach it so that it cuts like that and you're not wasting any paper okay you, these two you're gonna have to cut you'll have this little piece here if you want to do something with it but <clears throat> these two pieces I'm going to also align center and attach so when I go to cut they're going to cut nested within each other that's all you have. The rest is going to be up to you how you want to decorate it. What theme is it? Is it a birthday theme? Is it balloons and candy? Is it <clears throat> Peter Pan with the characters flying through the night above the pirate ship? Um, it's all those fun things. I've seen another um, creator, Sophie's Corner, and she did, you know, a windmill, like a farm theme. And so the, what was turning was the actual windmill. So now you've got to start thinking about like where the pieces are going to be, um, what you're going to add to it. So that's going to be the fun part, the difficult part, but, <laughs> but still fun, fun and challenging. So anyway, I hope that convinces you to use it. This is so fun and so easy, the building blocks. Um, anyone can do it. The timepiece will fit in there. You throw in a battery and it's going to start ticking that whole building uh, piece of it is very, very easy. The rest is up to you to make it, you know, totally yours. All right, I hope that was helpful. I will see you guys next time.